Hey, brother, I actually got your email. You wanted to ask my advice about the uh, anathema ritual. So you've seen my post on uh, Facebook, as well as, you know, people who have claimed to, you know, know everything there is about deicide. Like, take uh, the example, Eli Mercury, for example. He didn't understand that you have to master the gate. Eric or Somnus Dreadwood put the anathema seal within profane seals with the idea to test people. And it would essentially fuck you over if you tried to jump into it and get quick power. He believed in um, Elise or Crowley's and the Golden Dawn methods of blind initiation, leaving people to figure it out for themselves. Like most people you know, haven't had fucking common sense to realize that the anathema seal itself, it only issues out a challenge and seals you within a death pact with the specific deity you have challenged. And there's actually a lot about deicide, which, you know, I've been passing to black adepts who are ready, you know, who have mastered the gate, who have been through the gate. And I'm not talking about spiritually i'm not talking about astrally i'm talking about physically opening the gate and there are some thing there are hidden things that you know people don't realize you never you never talk about essentially what deity you go after and there's a lot of research in the deity you go after you have to know which plane of existence is it from who are its legions what serves it and this is something Eli Mercury and many others didn't understand. There are, I have devised ways to build a sort of deicide chamber with certain traps and sigils on the walls, you know, meant to call and confine poison and essentially confuse the entity when you issue out this death pact. Like one of my main methods when I go after a deity that someone either sends or is dumb enough to uh, send after me, what I will actually use is a form of demonic mimicry to take the shape of an enemy and have it strike out against them. And demonic mimicry isn't just an illusion, it is matching that person's energy perfectly. And by doing this, you're, you've been able, if you've been able to, um, I would say, project inside their home, match their energy frequency, or public, the entity isn't going to know the difference. So it's a form of trickery that works, but remember, no trick works twice against an immortal deity. And that's something you'll eventually get to. The other thing was creating divine weaponry, which you can get this from uh, Cinnabog. When you do this, he will instruct you, he will find how to craft divine weaponry. You notice how some of the blighted, they always have this certain, they're known for this certain instrument in their hand. And I want you to think about the Greek pantheon who were given gifts, you know, from Zeus as well. And this is a similar fashion. Mortals have this as well, dwelling within their souls. You know, mortals are just as old in this place. But mine was essentially to essentially invoke my uh, aspect of demonic justice, what I feel is justice. That's why this, uh, this, this uh, staff here, you had, you had asked me about when you uh, projected here before. It is meant as a divine weapon. This is why you see the specific idols on it. Um, there are certain materials I was able to gather, like the, um, the golden kyanite, each having, essentially, it bolsters my psionic abilities, you know, seeing as I weave void sorcery and ne uh, necromancy together. So you see the, uh, the crown of Yeshua on it, or Jesus. 
it's been desecrated because as we spoke of before there is power in divine desecration divine blasphemy but it is also a poisonous uh, plant as well now this skull I had actually made a mixture of with uh, black roosters and pig's blood and all types of stuff like that um, various poisons with this cop skull you know it was a it was a cop a very corrupt cop who was who died in the 1950s around that time for racial abuses and as I was talking about before you you choose your um, you choose your instruments carefully they can instruct you on how to call a specific sorcery from your lineage and now this actually wasn't the uh, first um, divine weapon that I've actually made as well you can actually have several of these for various purposes but yeah I have like the antique rubies and uh, there's opal here because it amplifies frequency it continues to put things out but it's meant for breaking through protections it's meant for calling the dead calling the necromance calling on the forces of uh, high necromancy but the paint and everything it has been it has been completely aligned with some of the same ingredients I told you to gather for the black gate but each of these has a different purpose essentially went just on touching this you know you would you invoke your that God self you evoke your ascended self same thing with making your divine vestments this is serving as an armor a shield like the blessed clothing you will see me wear in videos like the golden the golden one you see me wear essentially has been I had actually allowed that to charge in one of the cemeteries that my dead was able to take over and subsume I had buried that in a vessel for um, nearly a year before retrieving it essentially it serves to bolster or amplify anything I do as well as rebuke any forms of curses and that's also why I wear it but there's various keys keys to deicide that you need especially when it pertains to the uh, one of or at least one of my phylacteries and I told you about the the throne as well it's a physical representation of where you will place your power then you have um, this is only one of my phylacteries but most people don't know that when I wear this in a video there's actually scrolls within here with elder seals elder magic is a form of source magic since we endure posthumous death and are reborn in the current on the back of this are certain crystals and gold precious metals etched with um, psionic runes from the void written in their language but in the these these here are actually uh, pig bones and this right here is uh, human bone there are I actually keep uh, the bone is actually hollowed out and within it there are there are certain seals for reflection magical amplification and enhancing the towers I was trained to go through each tower before I took over so I wanted my phylactery to represent each and every one of them but I had worked on this rigorously like even painting it in uh, precious melted metals and things like that uh, it has a lot of insane ingredients like I sent you the materials for how to make a plague ward this is essentially from you know the Tower of Maladies the plague ward is when someone launches their 
energy frequency when they send out a demon or something against you. It sickens the spirit. It poisons it. You have to weaken it before you take it. But this is one of the things that they get pulled up in when enemies just look at it or listen. You know, it's infused with uh, Rahari shadow speech and several other things, such as the um, Iblis's, Iblis's hidden uh, runes and languages. But this is one of the other uh, divine tools as well. It's crude. It's actually my it, this was actually my first one it was it was taken from the crypt of a murderer this too i paint, painted in the very same substance that i drew the black gate in that pig's blood that sulfur that brimstone powder the uh grounded up bones you know of a sacrificed black hen as well to empower it right for opening and I did the same thing with the banners you see in my temple as well which you're definitely going to need if you're performing the anathema right but those are just some of the methods I've used I've sent you the seals that you will essentially paint on the walls and there is a form of um there's a form of incense that you can make it is it's highly toxic to entities but non-fatal to humans and what it'll actually do is it'll serve to poison and weaken the entity when you have bound it in your temple it's it's quite possibly one of the most diabolical things but remember as i said you should choose the entity you go after very carefully you have to know all of their aspects the faces their names everything about them this is what I was essentially trying to explain after uh, Eli Mercury fucked up and was attempting to just perform rites of deicide on everything. You're bound to them uh, forever. You have to know how to use the Black Gate to get to a demonic realm called Nezirakan. That's one of the places where after you've defeated them, you take them there. And when you take them there, they can't escape. They can't escape until they have been fully dissolved. This could take many, many years. I had to slay a deity that was within my own ancestral line. It believed that my lineage was inherently evil. So it was placing generational curses within our bloodline. So that was one of the ones I had to kill. It was very powerful. And even to this day, it has taken years to dissolve it fully. And it's probably going to take many more. Remember how I said the spirits of the Majoran current will actually, they'll feed you this subtly and, and slowly. That's why I have you document all of your changes in such a way. But what you're doing is, this is a, a very dangerous rite. But I know you've prepared for it because you know more than most and you've contacted me more than most. But those are some of the things that you can use. I have just emailed you that, that incense mixture as well. A lot of it is uh, really hard to obtain, but I've sent certain websites to uh to help you get them but yeah i would start building contact chenarog about creating a divine weapon he'll be able to if you let him in your lineage in your blood he'll be able to find and source out divine weaponry and it's going to be specifically catered to you and your bloodline and there were all kinds of uh, things that I placed in this, as well as the uh, this this blade here. It was for breaking certain forms of um, bindings and literally cutting through the veil itself, opening portals just by cutting through the air in front of you. 
So that's like that's essentially one of my most powerful tools. I will use that uh, purely for evocation and summoning. But yeah, that's there is a lot more to this that you know I'm not gonna be able to say even in our private videos. Uh, YouTube will attempt to censor me. So I'm going to send you a, an email on for my Proton mail account and so you could prepare for it. Make sure you have gotten your uh, demonic seal as well, as well as your own keys to power, your own dominion. You've under, you understand your own name, your own seal, because just like every other demon or spirit on the planet, every human that has manifested here has their own sigil. That's why you will hear me say certain things like every, every entity is meant to do something different. Some people are drawn to heal, some people will indulge, some people are drawn to more, to blacker paths. Some people are drawn to the fallen and others in other organizations are drawn to the holy, you know, or what's perceived as holy. But that's one of the things that uh, you should definitely uh, get into. Understand your names, dissect your seal, because it's, it's not just, and like most people think it's just, when it pertains to demons, it is just a hotline. Now, the seal actually reveals a lot about them when you've dissected it. It reveals their powers. It reveals their domain. It reveals their specializations and where they're from. Some some demonic seals you will feel as, moreover, overtly aggressive. And when you've gotten that, it's good to bind yourself to it, to ritualistically appoint yourself to it. I actually um, got mine uh, tattooed on my chest. And... It has been it has been causing all kinds of changes within me. I see things from a very different perspective. And shortly after I completed all of this, once I was ready, you're going to you're going to as how do I explain this? They're not like your average legionnaires that you have to collect to come to serve you. To come to serve beside you, I'll say. You, the establishment of your court. There are certain spirits that are going to want to follow you. They like what you're about. They know what your energy is about. These are actually arch demonic entities that will want to serve beside you. And you, it's up to you to get their, their names, their sigils, to ritualistically appoint them to their task because you have to think of yourself as a demonic general, as of sorts. When I received mine, they were unnamed spirits within the void whose seals I had gotten. And I had put them, I had ritualistically exalted them into my court, into my dominion, gave them access to it. And when they work to spread their dominion, it spreads yours as well. And remember, you have to be absolutely sure about this because not everyone gets a court because not everyone knows how to lead. And just walking up to random entities in a demonic realm is, is, could prove bad for you if you're, you know, you forcibly attempt to tell them to, to serve you. They're going to come to you of their own volition. We don't rely on, you know, uh, names of God and all that other bullshit like that. And they're going to be with you forever. They're going to be connected to you. You're going to experience their changes and they're going to channel their knowledge through you. So that's one of the other things you will have to eventually get is your court. And eventually I had been receiving um, word from the elders as well. To since you've been here so long to you know orchestrate a meeting as well and take in mind these people 
are no longer people once you reach that stage you get exposed to the real world of sorcery the underground sorcery you get to see who's truly running the show and take take in mind these are people that even eric feared you know he went against the grain each of them leads their own cabal a lot of people think what we do here is indentured servitude no when you reach the uh, um when you reach that state of ascended when you become an elder as well we expect you to split off and go form your own organization now since somnus was a fool he went against the grain and went public you know back in 2010 but these are the people that most people don't know they exist until they meet them you know when they initiated me I'm still not quite on their level. Like seeing them and meeting them, I I humbled myself when I actually met them in person. These are people who are completely transfigured. When I went through my initiation with them, they were the ones who ended up uh, branding Eric. You know, he was supposed to retire, but he started getting in my way, so they branded him. That's why the Bears Ryan Cabal will always exist there will always be a successor it will be here you know long after i'm gone but these are these people have completely changed you know i'm still proving myself to them as well that i can handle what they've given me um it, during constant tests as well because i am the youngest and thankfully because of my chosen tower you know i don't look overtly fucking demonic like them you know these are people who are so changed that um going out in public even pro proves to be a bit of a problem and since you've chosen atrophy and that i'm guiding you through atrophy you're going to meet the one who i've been telling you about just be respectful because you know they are infernals they will give in to their instincts this is why we screen so many people before uh, meeting them because could you imagine today where if I was just initiating novices and having them meet them you know I mean there's a man who can literally who's I would say vampiric without revealing too much and that's the that's one of the ones you're gonna meet this man can move faster than the eye can track he's stronger than i've ever seen you know people who have who have completely changed to where you know the mundane doesn't really uh suit them anymore but just be careful when we do meet them as well um there's going to be a lot that they teach you a lot that they expose you to and the elder current within Mayor Jirai is is very different you learn the true name of Mayor Jirai as well because it has its power but that power is kept in secrecy but that's something I want you to definitely understand when you do meet them because you have to you have to learn to control yourself as well when you get it because as elders, we don't really have the option of, I would say, you know, doing whatever the fuck we want. You imagine you got initiated into the source of this current and you knew for a fact every spell you did was going to manifest instantaneously. This is instantaneous sorcery. I had first used this um, you know, I sent you the evidence of one of my enemies that was, you know, in Haiti as well. And he ended up uh, dying right after the curse that I had filmed for you. There was, I had immediately gotten questioned by people who I did not know just because me and him were beefing, you know, somewhat uh, publicly you know in the Haitian Buddha communities 
But that's what ended up happening. I ended up getting questioned, even though they couldn't really prove it. It was the fact that the spell had manifested so quickly. Because to them, it looked like a drug overdose. But within this, within this skull, I used the divine weaponry. And once you've been initiated into the Elder Current, that magic is instantaneous. So this contains, um, you know, several, several parts within the skull. Uh, I would say pieces of certain cemeteries connected to spirits of suicide, you know, their bones, parts of their bones are inside of the skull. But that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be very, very careful because your power at that point is going to draw a lot of attention to yourself. Because you think you're running into problems right now just working with the Black Gate. There is a certain form, uh, there are certain forms of magic that the machinations in this world won't allow to manifest. They'll commonly let things manifest, like the most powerful thing in this world is uh, wealth sorcery, and only to a certain extent, only to those who are really in power. But once you're, Mayor, it's like I told you before, Mayor Jirai and magic a lot of it is forbidden because it comes from the dark Akashic. It comes from what's forbidden, what's hidden. And what that means is it's going to consistently draw attention whenever it's used. So you have to use it very carefully and learn how to cloak yourself. But I'm not going to rant on in this uh, this little private video. Um, I will have you send me an, an update once you're prepared to do the anathema. Because I'm going to help you as well as teach you the methods of demonic mimicry. So you can use an enemy or someone else to take the fallout from the pantheon that you go after. But um, let me know what you're going to um, end up challenging and after after we've determined you know that it's it's the proper entity because there's some entities you can't fight like how Eli Mercury tried to fight uh, Jehovah you know Asmodeus, Cinnabog and Cinnabog and a bunch of other a bunch of other entities there are just some things you cannot fight you cannot bind you cannot destroy especially Jehovah, there is, it feeds off of so much of the faith of humanity. This is how it can keep reconstituting itself as well. People have an idea of what it is and it is latched on to their energy signature. And that's why I want you to tell me what deity you challenge. Other than that, you'll only be sharing that information with me, but no one else. And you will not uh, do what Somnus Dreadwood did. He was an absolute idiot. You know, as we both know, you do not tell people what you slay because it can easily be taken from you if um, certain things in charge know that that essence is within a human. Because he, he made it very clear that he went after the aspect of Somnus. Like, if you remember before, in the earlier days, you know, he was able to meet with us in our dreams because of that aspect. So you're going to challenge something with a domain you know. But, you know, when he was branded, he, you know, obviously lost all that. The elders uh, stripped him of everything. But, yeah, you will not, you know, put, you know... <laughs> into a grimoire or something what you slew especially how I told you not to you know never share your purpose or what you are or what you've become because then you expose not only your weaknesses you expose what you've done and the people in this world you have to let go of everything if you run around talking about you know I killed a god and did this people are gonna think you're fucking crazy so you actually have to, it's, this 
in a certain sense allows it to never become an ego trip only you need to know what you did just like only I need to know what I did to that specific entity but that'll be all for now before I you know make this uh, lecture longer than it needs to be I'll see you in your uh, next update much love and respect brother keep pushing